Oh, geez, that was not a transition at all. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Civ Show podcast, where we suck so you don't have to. I'm your host, Moisos. Raising Zozo. And Nystagmus. And we have a lot of things to talk about today, one of them being the Peppermint Butler pummeling as i like to call it you can call it pounding pummeling beat down whatever man it was an absolute massacre again was anybody really surprised by that no movie? no like, on a huge map and we're all far apart no one's going to war you, know? you were close to pv you could have went to war with i him. i was close i you know i was too far from anyone else and i just I messed up Spain so bad. Um, oh, how? Just choosing. I chose the wrong um, everything, and like, like how did not you feel chose... about. Did you get work ethic? I did not get work ethic, <laughs> as you know well. Uh, but like, even that, like, I, I <laughs> did mean. not get. It wouldn't have. It, it didn't. It yeah, because I, I went and took um, the desert thing, Aurora or whatever. Not Aurora, the, the uh, desert, desert folklore. folklore. Yeah. And I got, yeah, I got my religion, but unfortunately, I got it three turns late because of a dang barbarian scout that came out of nowhere. Um, and uh, I like, I needed one turn to build it. I was, I was one turn away from getting my faith. So I would have gotten it had it not been for that dang uh, thing. And then, yeah, losing work ethic, that was huge. Um, so that sucked big time i was i had like plus 12 bonuses in some places you had some massive holy sites um, they were next to ley lines they were surrounded yeah, by desert went, man it was crazy I, I went for um the hermetic order thinking all right let's do this i'll get i'll get the and no it, it was not to be so had i gone because i was spain if i had gone i was spain in northern africa is where i started um, if I had gone for the Owls of Minerva, I think it would have been a very different game. My trade routes were insane. Absolutely well, insane. They're Spain. The, the, um, new, the new Spain will have some <laughs> insane trade routes now. Yeah. 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 What, what were the numbers yeah, like for those? <laughs> it was, they were beautiful. They were like 20, 27, like, like they were even early in the game. They were like 12, 16. Um, and I, I starting in, in Northern um, Africa, I'm right beside Europe. I'm right beside Asia. There are like five city states all around me. Uh, I think I would have done way better not worrying about religion. Like, sure, I might have gotten it, but it wouldn't have been a critical part of the strategy um, and just gone lots and lots of trade. Uh, but no, I tried the religion and then I, I messed it up big. And, and so I end up having this like motley, like this total mix of abilities that did not flow well together. So I was not going after PB. There's no way I was going after PB. If I had got though, maybe if I had got the work ethic, because I would my cities would have been crazy production, right? Uh, maybe. But anyways, why didn't you guys attack him? Uh, Nastasia, what were you doing over there in South America? I don't know. I have no oh idea what God, you're doing over there. Production, even though I got work ethic, my production was god awful. For like half that makes it, that makes it even worse. <laughs> that makes it even worse. You didn't even need it. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't even need it, and you took it because you because you well, heard I, I had desert to, or, I had or, to use Stonehenge to steal the religions. My it's the it's the nystagmus move. Um, right at the moment when you're, it's best when you're like one turn away from getting the religion before I do. That's when it's the best. Um, I didn't really have a strategy. I don't really play. I was a Mapuche, so I don't. Mm -hmm. I've never played them before ever. So I was just kind of discombobulated, and then I wasn't even near anybody. So I was like, okay, well, even like one of their good abilities, which is like um, um, that ability, like you know, when they, the other side's a golden age. If I was beside PB, I'd be like, yeah, PB's gonna be the golden age like every age. So th that would really work in my favor, right? But I wasn't even beside him, so. Um, and then uh, I gave up when I saw him come forward with like uh, coal powered ships, and my uh, people were still paddling with their ships. Uh, right next to it. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm probably uh, behind in the science race." I think um, probably. I, I think I just I didn't expand enough. 
because my cities were struggling with production and um i had a couple hurricanes like come by and, and mess me up a little bit so mm. um uh but yeah generally speaking uh uh was it was not a good game for me <laughs> You also didn't really have a close neighbor. Your closest neighbor is Greece in North America, right? You had to go all the way up to North America in order to kill like, them, right? And they had like the most impossible choke point to get past. Yeah, <laughs> Central America, exactly. <laughs> so you, you you did not have a, a good game then? No. no. I never have a good game, but that was an especially bad game for me. <laughs> if, like playing on a huge map is always, you know, difficult and then uh like i like where i started don't get me wrong i love north africa's great um but yeah like huge map um and then yeah when pb's your opponent and like he has no one opposing him and he's just like tucked away in southern africa and just like <laughs> and it's like he had like seven cities and like they were all like just the most amazingly built perfectly compact yeah. everything flowing amazingly you know how like his what, what was his stats like first hundred turns he got to like he won on turn one hundred and three hundred you know that right one hundred he was <laughs> turn one hundred and three no I didn't realize it was that early yeah uh, and, he had six hundred culture and like five hundred science on turn one hundred and three yeah Ridiculous. what the hell is that what? guy on. What that thing's on another level, man. Well, like, we're gonna show him next week, guys. It's gonna be all three of us games. Yeah, so we're gonna show him yeah. next week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna show him. He's gonna he's gonna see what, how we can use and, and and win the day. Uh, yeah, that that's what's going to happen. Well, I think he's, well, gonna, I think he's gonna kick our butts. So be, I I <laughs> maybe, but I I played Maya uh last week and i started in the mediterranean like where phoenicia would be uh it's like middle east ish area and i thought i had a really good game like i was killing it i had so much science i was throughout the game i was keeping up with pb even beating him in science i'm like yeah dude this i'm doing amazing like i have like 100 science on turn 50 this is great this is an amazing game oh i have like 200 science on turn 75 this is amazing this is great and then PB has like 500 science on turn 80. And I'm like, what in the world is this guy doing? And, and he was playing Georgia. Georgia. And he murdered us all. Let's just, let's just really sink that in. Okay. Debatably one of the worst sieves in the game. Even after the change. People don't like her change, right? Debatably one of the worst sieves in the game. And he showed us up with 600 culture 500 science, like 500 faith per turn as well, and like 600 gold per turn on turn 100. What? <laughs> it, it, it was it was pretty. It was pretty sad. It was, um, and, and it's like it's always it's always the problem when playing the you know players like PB or um, uh, on spot. Is they're just so much better than you, and you don't know what they're doing. You know, I get frustrated sometimes when I'm like, "Oh, Matt, are you doing here to me?" But these guys are like, like, yeah, like that was like, like quintuple, seven times us. Like, like I think I I got my science up to I think seventy, and I was happy. I was like, "Oh man, I got my science. <laughs> I'm a minute more. My science way up. It didn't matter." Uh, and his culture was just ridiculous. Like, like what when he when he when he when we finished the game, did did he say he had mobilization? Did he say he had democracy? Yeah, like he was he, was, he was in democracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he like just got it. I think yeah. so. So like, I I still think like even if this next game, are we are we talking about this next game? Um, yeah, why not? Yeah, go for it. So the next game, the the idea <laughs> is we're just gonna outright be it's th us three versus you. Uh, and PB that versus simple. PB. We're, just, just PB, we're coming for you. Okay, Peppermint Butler, we're coming for you. Now I think we're gonna let him choose our sieves, right? Something along those lines. Or what I'd like to do is actually that he can choose three sieves for us each, and then we get to choose one of them from. from I like those. I like that idea. Okay. Um, yeah. But I still don't think it'll be enough. 
now. We'll see. Like I, 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 I do theorize that with some of these players, these players, if you attack them right away, they're in trouble. They need to have that, um, you know, to, to do their hijinks, they need to have that their, their perfect system goes uninterrupted. Um, and uh, so that's my theory. So maybe... He did say that, but then at the same maybe. time, his warfare is also incredibly good, as we saw with Byzantium. But his early warfare, we don't know his early warfare. We don't right? know. We yeah, have no early idea. Early warfare, we don't know. Like, if, if, if he knows, if he's got the Sivmath gods are on his side, so he knows exactly what to build and where, but if that gets disrupted early on, um, then maybe, may, and then maybe we'll learn a lesson. And maybe the lesson is we got to attack these guys, like, right away. We have They have to be uh, put in their place. Uh, you know, like even um, the game we had a couple weeks ago with where uh, with Carl and uh, and um, Van, Bradley. Van Bradley, yeah, Van Bradley. I attacked him quickly, and that threw him off. It threw off his game, and I and he wasn't able to fully recover from that. Right, like eventually he did, like come at. Oh me. right, yeah, um, you kill, you but, murdered him. Oh, but I murdered geez. him. Yeah, I yeah, murdered yeah, yeah. him. I murdered King him. Arthur, so, another King Arthur shenanigan. King Arthur. Jesus Christ, that guy. With, with King, King Arthur, Arthur man, yeah. good, good hero. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. So, um, so yeah, it worked. Like right. rushing him the other worked. Strategy that one of us could do is we could do the sacrifice play. Right, one person gets in an IRL war, just like constant war with PB. Other two sim. Yeah, and the other two <laughs> just sim. Right, like that. That that way, like, because if all of his production is going towards units, and you guys are in the other unit, people are free to like just put their production towards something useful. Um, then that should theoretically allow one of you to like reach out for a culture victory or a science victory or something like that. Well, just make sure that Zoe is not the one going for the culture victory because I don't he doesn't understand. <laughs> Whatever. I'm I understand it. I'm getting it. Okay. I'm playing this Canada game. I'm yeah, you need it. a culture victory as Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I gotta, I gotta Canada, have a culture build, victory. Build theater squares, then build hockey rinks, make national parks. Question mark, question mark, question mark, profit. Probably. Yeah, Probably victory. Uh, so, but, like I'm in, I'm in third place, but I just got hockey rinks, and I am three turns from conservation, which will get me my Mounties um, uh, and national park. So um, I don't know. I'm confident. Like I, I like. I think the Canada Canadian improvement is significant. I was about um, to ask that. Yeah, how's the new Canada? How do you feel? I. I, I think that their cities can now grow large and have an amazing production. And as a culture sieve, you need to have lots of production. Um, and I like... I just that, say, you need lots of production for whatever you're going for. Yeah, well, yeah, but like... <laughs> yeah, I, true. Like, I, I, every victory condition needs, uh, needs production. But like, the Canadian a number of production, I think it makes them very versatile. Um, and, uh, you know, like, like, uh, space and diplomacy are there too. I actually think Canada could, could, could rock some domination. Um, really? you know, yeah, well, especially against the AI because the AI does not declare war on Canada. I have never playing Canada. I've never had the AI declare war on me. I've never had them denounce me. I don't even know if they know how to be completely honest. <laughs> they know uh, how to denounce. Allowed... They've denounced before. Yeah. I, not me. And not, when not, I'm Canada, no, I don't know. I yeah. Not, not been... as, as... Yeah, uh, in Canada's my game, stuff. my Diplo victory game, I think Russia just like war on me at one point. Um, or <laughs> so you can, out. I think you can pick off the computer players one by to one. Be, to be fair, though, I was trying to convert his holy city like off the bat. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, moved all, I, mean, I moved all my missionaries there, and I tried to convert his holy city like immediately. <laughs> Got pretty much upset about that. Yeah, it. That'll piss that'll, off that'll Russia. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the new Canadian abilities, man, they're good. Like. I would debate. I know we don't like talking about tiers and everything like that, but like no, they used to be like, like they used to be like C tiers. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. This is the Moy tier list. Maybe I'll release one one day because I think Bose and PB just released one. So like, damn, I gotta hop on board. Um, I used to put them at like C tier Canada, maybe even D tier. Like they're bad. Like they were not good until like way too late, right? Now with them being able to build farms on tundra and it's like you get four food out of it right away and you get yeah. four production out of a mine too like wow they are yeah. so 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 good 
And like, I was, would say that they're at least up to like an A tier, like at least like that, A tier. And that was the issue before with them. It's like, yeah, great. You have the production, but your cities are smoke. Right. So you're not, yeah. you're not working. You're not able to work these fields um, unless you have kind of like a half and half city where part of it's, you know, nice and arable. The other part's not. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sharkster, I do know Canada's abilities. Okay. And cannot be surprised war. The computer has to denounce you in order to get that. And I just find as Canada, they never denounce me. I'm just saying, that's been my experience. Okay, I know I know their abilities. Because who, who picks a fight with Canada? You don't. It's, it's, it's Canada. I mean... The funny thing is, though, when you... Why do you fight Canada for? <laughs> when, you play, when you play against Canada, like, I don't like having them as an opponent. I find them, they're like zerglings. Like, they're just everywhere. They just... They just grow very quickly. Like I find that they're expansionistic. Uh, they build lots of cities, um, and that's been my experience when they're the opponent, um, which is just really annoying. They also get mad at all... you for like every little thing, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So Rupert Laurier just comes up, he's like frowning at you. <laughs> always frowning. It's always you say, upset. I'm sorry. About you say I'm sorry. He's like ah, uh-uh. in English and in French. And in French. He just uh-uh. scowls uh-uh. at you. <laughs> Um, that just reminds me I, of the movie Canadian Bacon. <laughs> Canadian Bacon. That's a great movie. Have you ever seen, seen Canadian Bacon? No, I've never even seen. heard of this movie, oh, dude. So, just a s- small tangent. I know we're talk- supposed to be talking about Sid, but in Canadian Bacon, <laughs> um, the the United States tries to start a cold war with Canada and starts saying that like Canada is like evil and stuff like that. So a bunch of people for, who live in Buffalo decide to try to like war with Canada and cross the, into the border and. Um, one of them gets arrested. So the other guys try to re- mount a rescue mission. And so they're driving around in a truck that they spray painted like die Canucks, die Canada sucks. And yeah, then yeah. a cop pulls them over and it's Dan Aykroyd. And Dan Aykroyd pulls him out of the car and he's like, so what is wrong with this sign right here? And it's like all this like horrible things about Canada. Like, uh, uh, we're not sure. He's like, you forgot. You forgot to put the sign in English and in French. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> he made God. them like spray. He made them spray paint it um, um, in French. Uh, yeah. um, for all that. <laughs> oh, that's good. You can't you can't a Canadian in that movie, say. they all say sorry. <laughs> Such a dumb stereotype. Power. But uh, so that was our solution. We played. We played as Canada and. Uh, but what did you, 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 Nisagamus, you did something completely different. What did you do? So I, I, I wanted to play the, um, the Civ 6 Challenge League from the week prior, the Persia one, uh, when you're playing as Greece, uh, as mm. Gorgo. Um, and okay, so I, so just like it happens usually, I think I thought the game was going pretty good until I hit a dark age and then I got crushed. Oh, like immediately. Because I went into a dark age, and then the other the other three Persian uh, civs went into a golden age, so I lost two cities to like loyalty flipping. One of them became a free city, and then they just surrounded my capital and killed me. Um, huh. And so, and it happened pretty quickly too. And I thought I was doing pretty good because I actually got two of the Persian players to actually fight each other. So oh, really, cool. yeah. What? So they were fighting each other. I went in, I raised one of his cities. I was like, yeah, I'm going to crush this guy. And then I forgot to look at the era timer. And then the era ended and I went into a dark age. <laughs> and I missed it by like one point. It was, it was a, a bad dark age. Like, and so I, I think I would have done okay if I didn't go into that dark age because I wouldn't have lost the, um, the free city. I don't think I would have lost the other city to loyalty. Um, and then because my uh, loyalty pressure from the other places, my capital was like useless. Like it was like plus, you know, like when, when it's really unhappy, it's like plus nine 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 to like make anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did that to me. So I, I, I didn't. It was basically just doing nothing for the whole turn thing. So I just gave up. See, I played that challenge too, and I had a much different experience. I, I did really well in that game. I won on like turn one hundred and nine, I think. And uh, the trick was to declare war on Persia before they declared war on you, because they get bonuses when they declare war on you, right? So you just need to declare war on them. Even if you're not ready, just do it. Just do it, and then they'll come to you. Yeah, you kill their units, and then you go to them. Um, I actually tried to pull a Zoe because their settler like, is walking near me. Oh. And so I declared war, but as soon as I declared war, they settled the city. And so, then so, I- lame. <laughs> so lame when that happened. So lame. You uh, should have an opportunity to steal that settler. And then I did take over. <laughs> I took over the city immediately anyway because I, I made a bunch of uh, hoplites. 
Yeah. Um, and then I took that city and then I had another city I settled south of the capital. Right. And then I went and I raised the next city. Um, and, and one of the, cause I got the other Persian player to attack them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, I didn't, I get the gold golden age timer and that's what screwed me over. Cause as soon as that happened, one my Southern city, which is a good production city went free city. The other one got raised to the ground by the computer because it like uh, it loyal like uh, loyalty flipped and they didn't want it I guess it's so, <laughs> and so they just like um, um, raised it and then uh, they just surrounded my capital so that's what happened to me so it was because I, I it's because I'm not used to playing with dramatic ages I hate I hate dramatic ages <laughs> you can't you that was your favorite game mode what do you mean you hate dramatic ages okay what's your oh, favorite game mode now what the yeah. heck. No, well, no, well, I don't, I don't consider secret societies a game mode. I, I yeah. don't consider it Civ anymore unless secret societies is a turn on. Mm-hmm. So it's not Civ anymore. You're, you're playing some other game. You're not, that, wow, that's, that's bold. That's uh, a bold statement. It's a bold so, statement. But I just don't like it because, um, it like some dark ages are like just devastating. Like, <laughs> I, lo- I think it's so flavorful. I think it's a very uh, flavorful way to play Civ um never a dull moment you know like yeah it sucks when you get it and you're like okay you know this is this is it the game is over now but like we did with carl the carl and uh I like two games in a row where you dark age out of existence and oh god play. i hate that so much uh, it happened to me in the scotland game you remember that the scotland yeah. uh yeah dude i got into one dark age and every single one of my cities just fell 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 Oh, so heartbreaking. All that work for nothing. Nothing. I nothing! hate it. You I, Yeah. So I, so I seem to not do well with the challenges to be honest. Like I did the Scotland one too and I got they got they're always like the Vector Cat's like hint, attack China. So I did it and I got every single time I just got my ass handed to me. <laughs> well you played on deity, right? On on that challenge? Did you play deity yeah, for the Greece challenge too? No, immortal. I just had to go with immortal. Oh, you didn't go emperor. You usually go emperor, right? No, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to do it like a very the highest possible difficulty that I, does that at least lets me play for a while. Like, even though I lost in that game, I didn't like die like immediately. So <laughs> I just don't want people to watch me. And then like I just they watch me for five minutes, just watch me get crushed like right what, away. You're right. So, what are you playing now? Immortal or or yeah, immortal. emperor? Immortal. Immortal. Yeah. Immortal's good. Immortal is a it's a stepping stone for sure um because it is it is significantly more difficult yeah um, so it is borderline deity right it's the I, level I, of before it, so i feel like emperor to immortal is the biggest jump or king to emperor might be the big biggest jump but like emperor to immortal is a big jump and then immortal to deity I, yeah, is not yeah, that yeah. bad i don't know in my yeah, opinion i was playing on immortal and i felt like i was playing a a, a deity game a little bit um because emperor like i just like i like there's some games where I just play by myself. I just stomp on the AI, with yeah. An emperor difficulty, um, yeah. because they just they can't like. He's even on the on the immortal when they declared when I declared war on Persia. All they did was they kept suiciding their units into my hoplite lines. Oh, they do that with like, deity too. Like, don't worry, that, that doesn't change. Yeah, like, <laughs> just, I just I put up a line of, of of hoplites and they just kept dying. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like you had a you had 150 strength higher than me, and now you're not. So. <laughs> I did see in your game though that like there were there was a lot of times where you had hoplites not beside each other like adjacent to each other, but you were still like attacking a city. So like there's little optimizations that you can do like make sure that you have groups of two oh, no. hoplites all the time, right? I ended up doing that. That's how I was able to take out cities before because then I got a general. So I got a great general. I can't remember which one. Um, and then I got right. three hoplites together, and then you put them right next to the city when it sieges. And because they're mm. all adjacent, like every single one of them, the, the, it's like the walls didn't matter um, when I took the first couple cities. But nice. then I had to split them up because then uh, barbarians were spawning um, like horse archers and um, uh, horsemen as well, all mm-hmm. on my southern border. And the city state that was there that I was Sousa of was like useless. They were pulling a real herald on me, like not oh, killing real the herald. <laughs> um, and so that's why I had to split them up because I was just building hoplites. I was spamming them essentially um, because I just, I wanted that adjacency bonus eventually. So after you left, I probably, that's probably when it started happening when I was like just spamming them. Mm-hmm. And I had, I had like six or, or something like that um, moving in on the, uh, on the Persian cities. 
I've learned to like hoplites a lot. After that game, I I didn't. I remember my opinion on hoplites was they get irrelevant too quickly. But after that game with Persia, I changed really. I, my opinion on them changed so fast. They're so good. Plus ten to adjacent for being adjacent to each other. Plus a general. I had a, I had Himiko too, so that that probably really helped. But yeah, all of that made it <laughs> so good. They were they were taking down immortals like they were nothing, just like pieces of paper, just like kasha, what bam, what you know, like a comic book, just per ker pow. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it felt like, dude. There's yeah, there's like um, playing. <laughs> yeah, those hoplites are incredibly good now. And with so after the change, so you you didn't feel the the military policy card plus one combat strength per military policy card uh so i didn't get far enough for me to like to put enough of them in because i only got to all the archie yeah but that even that's a plus three to like you can put two military cards one wild card so that's three plus the plus four that you already have from oligarchy that's plus seven right so like I didn't, what happened like, okay so i have nothing i had nothing to compare it to right oh. like i don't really play gorgo so like i said like when i have my hoplites with each other with a general with that military policy card with oligarchy i was melting things right mm-hmm. i took i took out all of that persia uh the enemy that was fighting i took out all their army i took out two of their cities i didn't lose a single unit did you recruit any heroes I had Hercules. Hercules? Is that like the first Wait, one? Why, why Hercules? He was the only one I found at the time. And so I oh. used him like right away just to build districts. Mm. So I, I put up my... So here's the thing. I kind of misunderstood what the point of the game was because it's called Thermopylae, right? So okay. when I first started, I was under the impression that he was going to put them around me. And I thought like... And it, granted, Vector Cat can't program the computer what to do, but I thought they were <laughs> super Andy. aggressive, and so I was putting encampments in the mountain passes. Oh, right? so I was trying to make it like Thermopylae, which is I wanted them to come at me so that I can melt their units, right? So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I got Hercules. This is great. So I could just walk around and just complete all my encampments. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> so that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find anyone else. I found Himiko at the end of the game, and then it didn't matter at that point because um, I was dying. Dead. Yeah, <laughs> I was already dead at the time. Yeah, My like, first was... hero was uh, the twins, the the Aztec twins, and I started stealing immortals. Oh man! <laughs> and then I had immortals and and hoplites all just attacking Persian. Oh, it was sick. It was sick. Mortals so, in the back, hoplites in the front. Woo! It's a good I time. I have no idea why, but the Persia, when I was playing, I don't know when you were there, I was playing, they weren't really building the mortals. I think I found two of them. Really? Yeah. What they were they were building? building like, they, were, they were building like horsemen and stuff, which is stupid because I, was, <laughs> I had like hoplites and stuff. Yeah. Right? So like, it's almost like Persia's like, oh, they're building, uh, they're building anti-cavalry units. You know what we need to do? Just keep throwing cavalry units after cavalry units until they eventually die. <laughs> they'll, like, get, they'll get to their kill bot ratio. Yeah. <laughs> they, they pulled the Zap Brannigan. Um, like I said, I was like rolling them until I got to the Dark Age. The Dark Age is what killed me. Just throw units at them until they get tired. Yeah. <laughs> works every time. <laughs> throw, bo- throw them until the, until the rivers cl- uh, clog up with their dead. And then they just like, whatever. Like, I don't know. It, it was interesting challenge. Vector Cat always comes up with like crazy challenges. Yeah, too, they're also, always really cool. I'm, in, I'm enjoying this one right now. Um, the Canadian one, I, right? I, yeah. I, I, yeah, the Canadian one. I, I almost wish I'd done the, like I wasn't, you know, I was not in a position to, to do it, but I almost wish I'd done it now. Uh, but yeah, this, this Canadian one's interesting and I wanted to play Canada more anyways, just to try mm-hmm. them out. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's healthy to learn victory conditions, right? So, yes. So, yes. <laughs> so I'm I'm learning the culture. You know what? It's it's not even like I'm understanding it. I still just think it's so dumb. <laughs> I just think culture victory is. It's just not my cup of tea. Uh, maybe maybe if I won it, was able to win it more readily, I'd like it. Maybe. Maybe. You're just being stubborn about it. Once you learn it, it's not that bad. 
It's really annoying. Honestly, the only thing that's annoying about culture victory is the timer that it gives you, right? Like it makes you feel like, yeah, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna and then it's like, no, that's a fake number. <laughs> not, right. that's not, when, just, not when that's just not when ugh. PB's using it. When PB's using it, it's it's, it's an ac- accurate number. <laughs> the, the, the number is accurate <laughs> yeah it, it just means that like you know it doesn't know what the pace you're going at because your pace is constantly changing so it goes off of the pace you had last turn and so if you generated a thousand tourism last turn it's thinking okay. you, you have I the potential to generate a thousand before. tourism every turn and i made this point before and i'll say it again if i don't care if carl's listening or not, it's like if you have a timer right the timer has to work like you can't be like Oh well, it's because of this. I'm like, well, then don't put the timer in. <laughs> if like under no situation the timer is actually accurate, then why do you have the timer? <laughs> it is accurate if it's steady. You know, then they added rock bands in. So that was an like, that was an addition to the game, I think, later on. And so that's what broke the timer. Is like rock bands and have it researching computers, like skyrocket your tourism stuff like that. It's only afterwards it broke. Initially, it worked. I think. Don't quote me on so that. you're saying that rock bands broke the game? Interesting. Rock bands? I hate rock bands. I think ugh, if there's one mechanic yeah, I really hate, I hate rock bands. Yeah, because they just they you know you 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 build all these uh, tile improvements for tourism. You're building your theater squares. You're building these um, wonders even, and they take forever to generate tourism. Forever, forever. Time, turn after turn after turn, and it's like, yeah, that's the point of the culture victory. Is every victory, it takes a long time, right? And I understand that. Then they introduce these rock bands, and like, here's 15,000 tourism, which is one performance, and I'm like, well, that, like, why? Like, that yeah. defeats the... Yeah. I don't know. I just it, think it's... It, it, it gets, and like... They're expensive, and I find that, for, at least for me, I just have bad luck. Like, I'll, is, I'll, I'll lose, like, four rock bands before one finally. Which is hilarious, because <laughs> when, you, when you compare it to the real world, can anyone tell me why rock bands give more tourism than, like, reasons why people actually go to tours and things? Like, like who, goes, who goes, yeah, man, I'm going to go to Europe because rock band there's there, right? Well, okay. Here's the argument against that, actually. For rock bands, you ha- you as the rock band need to go to foreign territories. So I like as Britain, I need to go to USA as the Beatles and play in the United States, so which then they will come British to Europe. Thing, I guess right, like yeah, yeah you know, that's kind of, like kind of. I I mean that's kind of what I was trying to imply. It's, yeah, like you know, the, it did generate it did generate like cult, tourism and culture and like uh. Yo, thanks um, for helping me not suck. Glad to see Canada is fun to play these days. Influence? Yeah, they, However, they, they influenced. Yeah, and, exactly. I like, so what I liked better about monopolies and stuff like that, that kind of brought it back in line, is I don't like, I still don't like that monopolies make tourism. I think that's weird. But mm-hmm. I don't, overall, I think the tourism mechanics kind of wonky, to be honest. But the idea, when you think about like cultural victory, right? So we talk about the real world, right? Who would have won a cultural victory in the real world? Right, it would be the United States. United States, yeah. Right, right. It's because they homogenize culture. Right, it's not just like you listen to their music, but you also you buy their products. Right, right. Wear their blue jeans. You're wearing their blue jeans. Yeah. So like you buy their products, you listen to their music, you watch you watch their their movies and stuff like that. Yeah. And so NBA and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and so. I think a cooler uh, and I don't know, Civ can, like, they can think it's a dumb idea or not, but would be if you had like meters you had to fill in cultural columns. Okay, interesting. Game, right, okay. instead of tourism, because really, no one goes to the United States for tourism. Really, right? Americans go to other places for tourism. Yeah. So America homogenizes culture, and then they make up the biggest cohort of tourists in the entire planet. Right, mm. China's probably going to overtake them pretty soon, but they're the number like the, the Yanks. They go everywhere, right? They go to Europe. They like they're like the tourists that everyone wants to come over, right? To to spend money in their country, right? Yeah. So I think it would be cooler if you had cultural bars to fill, like when it comes to like um, uh, movies and TV shows, uh, uh, art, art and and culture, and then you had like um, um, monopolies or products. And having products that everyone uses or needs to use or something like that, 
and then having like uh, your music and, and uh, movies be dominant. So you would just be culturally dominant in all those different categories and then mm-hmm. you would win, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not just like your culture as a big uh, hegemonic thing is dominant over another person's culture. Different aspects could be dominant over other people. So your music and movies could be dominant over everyone else, but they someone else can can make other products and you can see that in real life too, right? So for example, in the 1990s, when it came to like electronic products, you can make the argument that Japanese culture um, was dominant because mm-hmm. a lot of like mm-hmm. the best electronics were made in Japan, right? And they started a lot of trends that um, um, people like follow suit and stuff like that. So they can have like these different categories. They have to dominate like maybe two thirds of them or something like that before you win the game. Hmm. Right? I kind of like that idea. Know... So what you're saying is in order to make culture victory better, they need to make it more complicated than it already <laughs> is. Interesting. No, it's not, not, it's not necessarily com- it's not more complicated. The reason why it's currently complicated is that no one really like the math that goes into like tourism calculation is actually like it, it seems pretty complicated to me because the numbers when you look at it are a little overwhelming, right? Everyone has a different tourism number they have to hit that they have to dominate basically um and it's not really like spelled out what the pathway is right mm. where you look at every other victory condition it's like basically spelled out for you right space victory do this thing then do this thing then do this thing then do this thing and then you win right okay. yeah uh, when it comes to religious one convert all the cities and then you win um when it comes to domination that's really straightforward like all the other victory conditions are basically like here's the instruction manual to win this part of the game. Um, whereas tourism, it just, it feels like, okay, there's, there's some numbers. And here's this thesis. Mark, Here you go. <laughs> yeah, question mark, question mark, question mark. And then you win profit. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. Like if you're saying get rid of tourism and replace it with something else, I'd be down for that. It's I like also influence, tourism. right? Replace yeah, it with influence. I think, I think mm. influence makes much more sense. Like when you look at previous civs, um, you know, the culture victory, uh, it was about influence. And like that line specifically, people are wearing your blue jeans and listening to your music. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, if you think about it, um, you can take a, a, a country over a couple of different ways. One of them, sure, you could conquer them. But another one is you make them just like you, right? So that, yeah, like, Eleanor, you know, well, I mean, you make them just like you in that... <laughs> Your your culture is your way of doing things is the way that they're doing things. You know, England, yeah. their claim to the their empire, right? Uh, you now have all these parliaments across the planet. That's what they did. They went and they they brought their culture, and that was their main claim to fame, right? Um, running things their way. Uh, it wasn't just a conquest. Like there are there are those governments still. There are parliaments still out there. The English aren't there anymore. They're still using the same basic systems, though, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Canada, United States, probably a good example too. Uh, we have a lot in common right. because we're flooded. Well, I would with like also American is, culture. Another aspect that can be for influence could be one of the biggest like cultural influences that England and the United States did as back to back hegemons. So England was global hegemonic power for a long time, and the United States kind of supplanted them in the 20th century. Is the main language to be used in business, in mm. in aviation, uh, in in most places, uh, uh, high up um, in, uh, in world dipl- in world diplomacy is in English. Yeah. Right. And so, um, like people don't know this, but like all pilots everywhere have to know English. That's just yeah. that's just the way it is. Um, yeah. um, it's like a universal language that they use for aviation communication. Yeah. Um, and so. That could be another like you can and, and Civ, victory can have so many different aspects to Civ, it. You, yeah, it it, it Civ is, doesn't even explore language, and it's a great example. That's, that's a good point uh, of, of of the culture and how um, lang- when language is mixed together, uh, that's when the culture is mixed together. But sometimes languages become dominant. And it's just and they supplement and they take over um, the the existing language uh, just because it's more readily spoken, you know. But then there are peoples like the welsh is a great example who and and quebec another great example who like they cling to their language and it's like what unites their culture right uh in wales 
people speak Welsh and English, not everybody, right? But in, in Quebec, more people speak, like fewer people speak English, right? That culture keeps them united. Um, that language, sorry, keeps their culture united. And Sim doesn't really touch language at all. Yeah. Uh, at, like at all. Uh, so that I'm curious, maybe if humankind did anything with language, but like language is so important. Um, and, uh, it's probably the most important development in, in, yeah. uh, human history. Yeah. And it allowed for, it allowed for societal learning. So for example, if you're a hunter gatherer society, you only learn what you learn from birth to when you die. Right. What actually made us allowed to jump leaps and bounds is that we all learn what everything everyone else learned before us. Right. Right. We write it down. Cumulative and knowledge, yeah. And stuff like that. So we have societal learning these days, which is every step we make, the next generation will then get everything and then they add on something. So right. continue to build up. Right. Right. And yeah. so language is actually really important for that ability because you, you have to be able to record what you've learned from before right and, and directly and meaning is important and um you know like the, the more complex language gets the more um you know people are able to interact and and discover things right but you need like that that language is our way of of communicating um and like english is a great example of like this what a complex language and you know i think what what is it they said you could go back to like i think 400 1400 ad would be about as far as you can go back where you could still understand english because it's just evolved so much and it assimilates well, that, other languages that's every language actually yeah like, by the year um by the year 3000 or so um our language would be indistinguishable would, would be indecipherable to the people living at that time Hmm. um that the words actually fall out of favor and they get switched up um english is that sometimes actually accelerated in english because english is the rules so english started as a spoken language only and then it became a right. written language afterwards because right. it's a spoken language it actually incorporates a lot of slang right um that really don't have to follow the rules of the language written out right so you could just say a word like a sound basically and it doesn't have to have a connotation to it so a lot of languages like romantic languages have uh male and uh female sounding right right yeah. so, like that england english doesn't have that restriction and so you can come up with slang words that which also means that you can have people who speak english from two for different parts of the world and they may not understand like what they're actually talking about <laughs> right like like Australians um, and yeah, Brit British I people. I love that about English. Yeah, <laughs> we Australian. Now, granted, right, a lot of languages do that too, though, right? So it, Italian is another classic example. When you listen to Italian on the TV, when you when you hear people speak Italian, what you're really what you're really listening to is the Florentine dialect of Italian. So mm. Florence, uh, there was a, a poet named Dante. He was the one who basically universalized um, Italian. But in, in our family, in Zoe and Iyer's family, we're from a southern, uh, our family's from a southern uh, Italian town. Their dialect sounds nothing like the Florentine dialect. Um, and so when, whenever I've heard my, my grandmother speak it and stuff, it doesn't sound like it's Italian. Um, and so other mm -hmm. languages have that too. But in English, it accelerates just because the rules of the language are more flexible for that. Um, and so uh also people always say that english is actually hard to learn that's not true english is hard to learn how to write properly because our grammar rules make no sense and there's <laughs> like no and there's no universality to it but learning how to speak english like just pick it up and speak it in day-to-day -day conversation is actually significantly easier than a lot of other languages right like um um uh, other languages if you don't use like the proper connotation that sentence makes no sense Chinese. Right. Yeah, Cantonese. You can say the same word. I, I don't have any examples off the top of my head. You can say the same word, but like emphasize a different part of the word and they mean completely different things. It's crazy. Yeah. And so in English, though, even if someone is not a native born English speaker, they can still get their point across. Right. Now, you may be able to tell that they're not a native born English speaker, but you can still communicate with that person. Right. 
Um, whereas in a lot of like Mandarin and Cantonese, like you said, yes, if you emphasize words uh, differently, and also even other languages like Japanese, and I'm not someone who speaks, but Japanese, the way they they structure their sentences would be uh, completely alien to someone who's not a native speaker because they the way that they put the verbs and the nouns in the in the sentence is completely strange. Like they'll put all yeah. the nouns in the beginning of the sentence and they put all the verbs at the end of the sentence, right? And so um, it's hard to like uh, to get around that when you're learning um, differently. It's the reason why learning languages is actually really good for a, a, a something called neuroplasticity because learning a new language forces you out of the box that you put yourself in because now you have to think a different way because the language might be that much different than how you normally think, wow. right? Because the language you make me think differently about how you would communicate the same subject, right? Which is the reason why when you have people um, talking to the UN, having a good translator is extremely important because having a wrong translation is easy, is, is uh, a lot easier to happen than you think. Um, and especially when it comes to languages that are very different and have different roots. So English is a dramatic language, um, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, French, they're all romantic languages. Then you have uh, in Europe, other languages like that are from the Slavic languages. And really it's super hard to translate Russian into English and have it mean the same thing. Hmm. Right. The, 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 the words that use, um, it's, it's very difficult to get the same message across. Um, and so it's because of that. And that's why um, in a lot of other shows, like sci-fi shows, when they talk about meeting aliens, there's like a possibility that we meet aliens and there's absolutely no way you could possibly communicate with them on any meaningful level. Hmm. Right. And I know we went on a huge tangent, not talking about Civ anymore. No, but... that was really interesting. Oh, and I had right. no I, idea. Like, the, wow. One of my favorite episodes of Star Trek, the uh, Darmok yeah. is all about that, right? Darmok and Jalar at Tanagra. And it's about how, amazing it is that people can even communicate at all now at least like obviously with humanity we have a common history so that's you know we're all the same species but yeah like um somebody who we take that for granted that communication is actually really really hard um and that's probably why we're also terrible at it right um <laughs> but it's like our entire world is based on communication and it's the reason why you still need humans to do it because if language was as easy as an algorithm it, there wouldn't be a joke about when you Google translate something from English to German to French to Italian and back again, that it completely doesn't make sense anymore <laughs> when you get back to the English translation, right? And so um, it, it is like very um, interesting. And that's why, like I said, neuroplasticity is like what people do to uh, stave off memory loss as they get older. Yeah. Because it's dimension. true, you don't make more brain cells as you get older. However, the amount of connections you make between brain cells can always change. And so that's the axons and the dendrites. So the, when they attach, when the, the cells communicate with each other, those can always be recreated. And that's called neuroplasticity. So, and you can force those connections into being made by doing something that you're not familiar with mm -hmm. because it's not yeah. the same pathway. You actually have to make new pathways in order to communicate it. It's, it's also the reason why it's harder to learn new languages as you get older because little kids have a lot more flexible neuroplasticity than adults yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We because our brains, uh, we want to reject new information, right? Instinctively, we, you know, you you tell me that palm means apple. I'm like, no, apple means apple. I reject that. I reject that you're, and I'm not. I'm not willing to. So we get defensive, I think. Whereas yeah. kids, they're like more flowing. There is a movie, one of my favorite sci-fi's actually. Um, that's all about this and it goes even beyond uh, neuroplasticity to like co comprehension um it was called the arrival i don't know if you guys saw the arrival um but yeah. one of the fundamental components of it is learning this alien language like this legit alien language and what made it so fascinating i you know i hope this isn't a, any sort of spoiler uh it's been out, for, like it's been out for yeah what's the what's the if it's Just been talk out for five about years it. okay um but so this language to understand um arthropod or uh, whatever it was called uh squiddy squiddy uh to understand it is to actually fundamentally understand time in a very different way um and essentially once you learn to speak this language 
your mind gets opened up uh, to the fourth dimension, essentially. Yeah. So the, the um, aliens in the movie, they don't experience time linearly. No. Uh, they they, 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 yeah, yeah they, they came to Earth for uh, because they needed humanity's help in a struggle against another race 3,000 years in the future. Uh, but like this is like how they got it started. Uh, and it's just such a fascinating... Uh, because like, there's 12 ships, they're all over the world. Uh, every government has a different way of going about it. Uh, like the, the Chinese tried to teach it our language by teaching it how to play games, uh, Go or whatever. Um, and uh, it's like if you teach, you use chess as a means to teach it, they're going to think that uh, everything is a, an opportunity for conflict and, and whatever. Such a fascinating movie. And uh, it's, it's like, for me, it's one of those rewatch movies. And like, I won't give away the big spoiler, but like, it's something that you have to, I think, watch the movie a couple times to realize what's actually going on. Because you, she, you, you, she keeps the main character, keeps seeing things out of order. And you think she's having flashbacks, but she's not. She's yeah. not having flashbacks. And when you realize she's not having flashbacks, you're like, oh, like when you realize what she's actually doing, she's flashing forward. I watched that movie um, with Liz, and I actually yeah. blurted that out about a quarter of the way through the movie. I realized what was going on. Yeah. Um, I do that sometimes. I, I ruin movies for people. Oh, uh, sure. yeah. Big ruin. <laughs> but yeah, I know a huge tangent, but I always thought that was very, and it's culture victory, because I think culture victory is, is something that, like, you know, from all the victory conditions, going back to Civ now, this is a Civ podcast, right? Uh, right. So, is it? Uh, right. Uh, what? Uh, um, is that domination victory, straightforward, takeover stuff. It's religious victory, pretty straightforward, ta uh, you know, takeover stuff, right? Same thing. It's a kind of a domination victory in, in another way. Science victory, you know, there's a goal, right? Cultural victory, I get it. Like, by definition, like, what is culture, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like people will always make like we say that America is culturally hegemonic in the world right now, but then other people will argue that America has no culture, right? Like they'll make that argument stuff like culture is subjective by its very nature, like cultural it weight, it, right? And so um, I get that it's hard. Um, it's a hard mechanic to have a victory condition surrounded by, right? So, um, so everything we say is out of love, developers, about the game and how the tourism mechanic works. <laughs> it's, um, it's constructive criticism. Way, it's okay. Nystagmus, did you mention a thank you for uh, Jake Fish at all? I don't know if any of us did. Uh, but did you in particular for his not. description? Okay. Well, I think this is the time to thank him. Nystagmus. Oh, uh, uh, Jake Fish has subscribed to us been for three months. Thanks. <laughs> Yay! No, just that, <laughs> that came up like like thirty minutes ago, and no, and none of us commented. I don't think <laughs> we were in the middle of a tangent. I, I, what are you gonna do? I know, <laughs> but the tangent kept going, and it got awkward. <laughs> <laughs> way to make it not awkward. <laughs> yeah, the way that you make it awkward is by pointing out that it got awkward. We're all friends here, guys. We're all friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I heard a good joke the other day, or I think it was yesterday, maybe even today. What's the difference between? Milk and America. What's the difference between milk and America? I don't know, Moy. What is the difference between milk and America? If you leave milk for a hundred years, it develops culture. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. That I heard it from Under Civ, and he's from Wales, so. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. But it at least ties into what you were saying, Nystagma. So, <laughs> woo! Uh, Welsh? I have no idea, to be honest with you. He's a Civ streamer. He's a part of Civ streamer. You should, you can watch him. He's a CPL, high-level CPL player. Oh, Under Civ. Wow. Uh, so the last thing that we want to uh, mention uh, is our new Patreon. Our Patreon! <laughs> Guys, we're starting a Patreon. Is it, isn't this exciting? We've made it. We're, we're real. <laughs> Did we? Wow. <laughs> we don't even have a patron yet. What, what yeah, do you mean? <laughs> well, once we, sh once we share today, the Patreon... We, we theoretically have patrons now, so yeah. theoretically. Oh. Yeah. They know about us. People know us. Okay? People know us. Uh, we have many leather-bound books, many of them yeah. somewhere in my room. Mahogany, you know? Yeah, like... My furniture smells of rich mahogany. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, we got a Patreon. So now, if you want, you can more directly support the Civ show um, and uh, you know be more involved. Wallet, I guess, is the, is the way. Um, yeah, and just like any other Patreon, it has different levels and different little perks for each level. Um, so definitely go and check that out. Um, do we uh, attach it to our front page here, or is it not? Well, he's yet? going to. He's in the process uh, of. Probably yeah, I'll it. do that. I'll right put now. it on on uh, Twitch in the Twitch chat right now, and I'll attach it to the front page, and it'll be in the show notes as well if you're on YouTube or if you're watching this or watching this on YouTube or listening to this on Spotify. It'll be all. It'll all be there. Patreon's but, fun. But uh, some examples of some of the perks that you can get if you pay for the highest tier, the deity tier, we call it. Uh, you can get a customized postcard from Woo! one of the members of the Civ show every single month. Every month. Those are going to be worth a lot of money. You know, in, <laughs> yeah, in, a, right. few, in a few hundred years. They're going to be... Uh, are they, they might even be autographed signed. Uh, so guys, work imagine. on your work on your alter ego's uh, signature. Oh jeez! Okay. Oh, oh, I gotta, like, oh man, I gotta so sign like moist sauce. Don't like, oh jeez, oh. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of speaking of language, I never <laughs> signed moist sauce in my life. I don't even know what that signature is gonna look like. Oh, you know what? I have a good idea. Okay, I'll practice it on the weekend. Start practicing, guys. <laughs> Start practicing. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, Civ Show, uh, we love it. It's a good, it's a passion, and. Um, but we, you know, we're we're always striving to make it better. Yes. And uh, if we had some more resources, we could go to the moon. We could go to the moon and more. Um, not because these things are easy, but because they are very hard. Um, and yeah, I have a dream. And that dream is uh, there on Patreon. There, I think I got most of the American <laughs> culture references from the last. Uh... <laughs> oh, uh, and the eagle. Is one small out, step. And... Does that one count as cultural man. appropriation? Um, no, I don't think it, it does because it's American. <laughs> <laughs> now that might be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, we have uh, started a, a patron. You can go as low as four dollars a month and as high as fifty. So uh, every every single tier would help us. We're trying to improve the show. We're trying to uh, purchase better gear, hire some editors. Uh, heck, if we even get to, I put as a joke, uh, it, it, as a goal, if we make twenty thousand dollars a month, we may or may not quit our jobs. So there you go. This Agnes, a doctor. He would quit. He'd walk away <laughs> from, from 20 years of education and crushing student loan debt, <laughs> all of that, you know, because he'd be making less money here on the Civ show. But uh, yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> it makes so much sense. Why would you settle for something why, with more money when you can go for something you, with less money? Why, yeah, come on, guys. Like, got to use common sense sometimes, you know? Um, so yeah, join our, <laughs> join our Patreon, uh, and, or don't, we'll, we'll keep making the show. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, re resources yeah. mean, uh, that we can do more things and doing more things will keep you engaged and entertained and, uh, it'll evolve as we go to the, the, the point here is engagement. We want to engage our community, but how do we engage them? What order do we go? You know, we need a tier system like a like a settler to deity tier you know mm, yeah, yeah like eight different so, tiers yeah. eight different tiers. does uh does each tier give you a different color on a on on the discord we could do that we could have that we, each we tier could we could definitely color. do that sure. it doesn't yeah. currently but i could so, make it like that no problem well yeah. so the coveted uh what would the uh, deity be like purple coveted purple Purple heart. Uh, well, we can determine that at a later date, but yeah, that, that's something that we can do for sure. Anyways, we we it's just it's it's glad I'm glad we finally got it to, together, and uh, now you can yeah you can support in other ways other than just tuning in. So yeah, check it out, guys. So yeah. So anyways, that's it for today, right? I think we're good. Oh, are, actually, are, here's a good we, question. Here's a good question. Uh, yeah. What things? could you do if you had some money 
So if we if we made enough money on Patreon, what what would be some examples of what we what we could do? Sure. Uh, I think the biggest one is you know Moy does a lot of the tech stuff here, um, and we'd rather Moy do, do uh, use his natural talent of uh, you know oh, uh, you. aggravating people and uh, hey. and and you know <laughs> making uh, a mess of things uh, because that's his best. That's his most uh potent talent so if we could get somebody helping us with editing that'd be great you know we'd be, be hiring amazing somebody. yeah so there's some unemployment thing really um so that is a, an example we can uh what else do you have there Moy? what are some other things that we could do if we uh we can I, I mean i wouldn't i wouldn't be opposed to putting on like tournaments for the community as well putting it yeah. towards tur- like a prize pool for tournaments uh, i think that would be really cool as well uh, we can buy things to just increase our production quality. So, like, I have I have a green screen behind me, but they these guys don't have a green screen. We oh. microphones, mixers, def- better cameras, better computers as well to make sure that everything's going. Because I know that sometimes we have some technical difficulties that we don't really have control over, but we can fix all that stuff and yeah. clean it all up eventually over time as we kind of make money uh, through Patreon and do it that way. So those are some like little yeah. ideas yeah. from there. It's it, well, it's also, um, you know, we try to put as much time as we can into this, um, and it is a lot of effort, uh, to, to, to do that. So, you know, you, you hope that there's some reward in the end, uh, that can help you out because we're also all, you know, we have our own families and we're all doing it, right. Um, and uh, we're entrepreneurs too, right? We are entrepreneurs. So, um, you know, it, it helps us justify the amount of time and energy right that we're you know opportunity costs we're not with our families we're not uh you know this is my free time this is what i do um so uh you know it's it's even just as a personal reflection that it's like okay we're making progress here um but yeah it's all the it's the little things at first but then like we can exp- as if if it's something that like we're able to t- put more time aside because we have some funding, uh, we can create more content, you know? Um, yeah. Anyways, what was that? Did we just have a little... Yeah, I, I hit refresh on my browser by accident, but it was all, apparently it was the same <laughs> hotkey as go to the intro scene, so, like, my bad. Nice. <laughs> anyway, nice. yeah, we can, Anyways, we, can, we can wrap this up. Let's, let's do that. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. And uh, Moy's going to tell you about one of our secret weapons to getting your attention. Uh, it inv- involves, uh, I think, pliers, a batter- car battery, and a bird. I'm not sure how it works. Go ahead, Moy. Okay, wait. How do I connect this car battery, bird? Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a positive and negative to everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a positive and negative to batteries, you know, the cool yep. side is the positive side, the negative side is the negative side. And there's even a positive side to a bird and a negative side to the bird. And the negative side, I obviously, like being the pooper. So, like, when you get pooped on, that's that's pretty negative about birds. But the cool things about birds is that they make cool noises. So, but the positive things about the birds is that we can name things after birds like twitter we named twitter after birds and the positive thing about following us on twitter is that you get to see the most up-to-date civ show content and civilization content so follow us on twitter that was pretty good that wasn't bad that wasn't bad those yeah, are some was, good uh, took us on there. a journey um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a journey. Now there some, I know there's some leaps in there, some evil, evil, uh, evil can evil leaps. But whatever, man, <laughs> I did my best. <laughs> Speaking of evil, uh, Nystagmus, your secret lab that you keep below your house with all those test tubes and experiments, right? You have uh, a couple experiments on the go. Uh, why don't you tell us about one of the more brutal experiments that you're working on right now to evolve science? Go for it. Yes, uh, one of the most brutal experiments is my. Uh, the next video I'm supposed to make for YouTube, which is now six months late. Yes. Six months uh, late. This so, tortured uh, beast. Uh, Don't worry. Uh, uh, different perspectives is uh, late too, so you're not alone. Uh, so uh, there's that going on right there. It's um, uh, the script uh, is the script for the video is actually culturing um, as we speak on my mm. desk because it has been moved in such a long Unlike time. Unlike America, just kidding. Uh, uh, so 
um, <laughs> there's that going on. It's disintegrating before my eyes. It may not uh, last very much longer. So I better get that script onto a video pretty soon. But the other videos you can watch are on our YouTube channel. Um, uh, definitely can check that out. If you ever miss a podcast or a VOD or our games on Sunday, definitely go check that out on YouTube. They all go up there. Um, and then I make my videos, which is the Better Know Leader series. You can check that out too. Raising uh, Zozo has his raising reviews. You can check those out. And then Moy makes reaction videos um, that uh, are really good whenever the new patch comes out or the new uh, Frontier Pass comes out, uh, new parts of it come out. Just go check that out um, and give us a like, a subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring that bell. We'll think one day I'm just not going to say it and see what you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ring that bell. Um, and then, of course, uh, if you're looking for the more intimate connection, you can join us on our Discord. It is the watering hole of the Civ Show community. Always a good pet pick or convo on the go. Uh, even just a great way to meet others in the community that you want to play some games with. Uh, lots of people have been playing, looking for group games. So you can come join us there on Discord. And of course, as always, we now offer you five days of show fun beginning at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Sunday, Sunday, Sunday here at Twitch TV. Uh, we'll have our other Civ show. We got what? We got uh, uh, Peppermint, uh, yeah, Butler. Peppermint Butler. 3v1. Butler. We're going to kick his ass. Yeah. yeah or, or it's going to be embarrassing. Uh, so either way, it'll probably be Sunday. Uh, and then, of course, you can join the Stagmas tea when he's available. I know he's got some uh, things coming up to protect the life of British Columbian citizens. Uh, Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, sorry, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then Zozo is back. I have been out of office for like three weeks for various reasons, uh, but I am back Tuesday mornings for your good morning amenities, yes. Uh, they're usually 9 or 10 a.m. <laughs> I'm starting trying to keep it concise. Uh, it's early morning. It's hard to wake up. And then we've got Moy at night on Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, of course, we finish every week uh, with the Civ Show podcast here at 1030 Eastern Standard Time. So you'll be here next week as well. Uh, I don't think there's anything else, boys, is there? No, that's it. Was good, it by man. the way, great to be back with the two of you. We've had such a long hiatus uh, where the, it hasn't, for all sorts of reasons, people haven't been able to make it. Uh, I think this is the first podcast the three of us have done in a bit, right? Because I think last week we were missing La the Stagmas. No, last week right? we had everybody. Uh, you oh, said you the same thing everybody? last week. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I did. Uh, all over the place. I lost power <laughs> one time, then I lost my internet yeah. one time. All these uh, memories, they're all folding into one another. Um, so, whatever. That's not uh, okay. Well, I guess that's it for this week. Are we going to raid somebody? Yeah, we're going to raid Foibles, our boy Foibles. Foibles in the house. Thanks for coming by, everybody. See you on Sunday. Yeah. Peppermint Butler, be, be there. Sunday, and Sunday, be Sunday. square, as so would say. Goodbye. <laughs>